Have you tried to buy a Raspberry Pi lately? Over a hundred dollars for the cheap one. For less than two of that, you could have a server with two Xeons in it, 16 cores, 32 gigs of RAM, and now you too can pretend that all the time you've spent on your PC in mom's basement saving the citizens of Reddit from wrong opinions through the power of your edgy comments. Because you're Hacker Man, the Cheeto-fingered hero the internet deserves but does not need. I managed to find a Hive Zeus with dual 10-core V2 Xeons and 64 gigs of RAM for $170. Used. Something you should know before you buy one. It's not quiet. My wife said it was her or the server, but I didn't hear her because the fans were too loud. But who needs the love of family when you have all these wonderful subscribers on YouTube? Right? This eardrum annihilating Zeus server, unlike most loud cars, is actually fast. Let's take a Raspberry Pi project like Pihole, the thing that blocks ads for your whole network. Updating a list of 1.7 million websites takes about two and a half minutes, only using two out of 20 Xeon cores, and on a Raspberry Pi with all four of its cores, over six minutes. So the Hive wins round one and brings home the seal of approval. If it's so fast, why is it so cheap? These Xeons are 10 years old. The RAM is DDR3, although upgrades are cheap. I went from 64 gigs to 128 gigs of RAM for less than 100 bucks. The main downside is that because this is a 1U server, you only get one single slot PCIe card. So gaming GPU options are limited but that's what these Silverstone cases down here are for. More videos on that coming up soon. So it's faster than a Raspberry Pi, but is it a fast computer? Minecraft server time. Giving a virtual Windows 10 machine, eight gigs of RAM, three dedicated to the server, and eight cores, we're hitting 50% CPU load running on powered rail, and a 75% load with the world barely keeping up using a boat on ice. Let's compare that to a Ryzen 5700G running the Minecraft server natively, and we're at 10% CPU usage with the world keeping up just fine. Ditching the virtual machine for bare metal on the Hive server, it also loads the world just fine, and we're also at 10% CPU usage. Not only did the Hive server keep up on bare metal with the 5700G, it did that while running six Linux and two Windows virtual machines at the same time. Another realistic heavy CPU workload without much in the way of hardware acceleration or silicon optimization, we have bulk audio conversion. Converting a 28 and a half hour mix of MP3, FLAC, and WAV to OGG four minutes flat on the Hive, and it only used one of the two Xeon CPUs, so you still have 10 cores, 20 threads not even being touched. On my workstation with the Ryzen 3900X, it did it in two minutes, three seconds, twice as fast as the Hive. But if this audio software had used both Xeons, we'd probably be looking at a tie. Let's do another benchmark. Since the launch of these Xeon CPUs, pretty much every AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel product launch has dedicated time showcasing improvements in 3D rendering, gaming, or video work. That's why in Cinebench, we see a much higher Cinebench score for the way more modern AMD 3900X. Modern workloads perform better on modern silicon. Wow! But then again, the 3900X is what, like 400-ish dollars, and the Hive is less than half that, so that is to be considered. The Hive Zeus costs less than two Raspberry Pis and can run more than 10 of them virtually at a time and faster. So what am I doing with mine? In the back, it has two USB 2 ports. Both are taken up with cheap MicroCenter 256 gig drives on the back to host torrents for large game mods and of course, Linux ISOs. The one PCIe slot has a Quadro T600 in it, 
which, thanks to Plex, can stream the family's now upscaled DVD and Blu-ray collection to our parents and siblings. I currently have six Pi holes set up, two for the main network, two stricter ones for the servers, and two even stricter than that for the kids. One virtual of each, and one on a Raspberry Pi for redundancy in case I'm doing updates or rebooting the Zeus server. I'm also hosting the family Minecraft server, and I have a book library that I can read in a web browser remotely on my phone with Ubiquity. All that and I'm still not using half this machine's capacity. There is going to be way more that this machine gets tasked with in the future. There are two tidbits you should know before you embark on this adventure yourself. When shopping, the main difference between a V1 and a V2 Xeon is going to be power consumption, not so much speed. You can use the built-in VGA graphics as long as you're fine with below 1080p resolution. Any usable resolution requires adding a video card, which can be done for 40 to 50 bucks. So instead of a GPU, you can throw in something like a USB 3 card or a SATA host card if you want more drives in there. But what are you going to use your server for? Let me know down below. I think I hear my wife pulling up in the driveway to hopefully take me back. So I'll end this video and see you in the next one.